become the NFL and the league's support of those who seek to weaken our national values and respect for those values. It's a fight that I believe we should have had in this country a long time ago, and one that is only becoming more heated. Sources say the Dallas Cowboys are now expected to protest the national anthem tonight before their game against the Cardinals. Exact details have not been divulged, but some Cowboy players have called to stage some sort of protest, one player even saying it's not going to be business as usual. The controversy ignited last August, with the NFL and its commissioner permitting Colin Kaepernick to insult the national anthem, our flag, and our country, and all without consequence. Then on Friday night, President Trump suggested at a rally in Alabama that the NFL should fire players who protest during the national anthem. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag to say, get that son of a off the field right now, out, he's fired. He's fired! And in a large show of defiance, more than 200 NFL players either sat or took a knee yesterday more simply just didn't come out of their locker rooms. President Trump, however, standing by his remarks that owners must hold players accountable. I think it's very disrespectful to our flag and to our country. So I certainly think the owners should do something about it. There was great solidarity. I watched a little bit. I was not watching the games today. Believe me, I'm doing other things. But I watched a little bit, and I will say that there was tremendous solidarity for our flag and for our country. The NFL, however, operating, it seems, over the past uh, 24 hours, was something of a mob mentality. Even New England Patriots quarterback Tom Brady, a friend of the president, spoke out against his comments. I certainly disagree with, you know, what he said and, and, and you know, thought it was just divisive. Divisive? Fox News senior correspondent Eric Sean is outside NFL headquarters in New York City with our report. Even after taking a hard hit, NFL Commissioner Ronja Goodell is protecting his players like an unmovable offensive line. Of the protests, he told Sports Illustrated, quote, they reflected the frustration, the disappointment of the players over the divisive rhetoric we heard. Roughly 200 kneeled or locked arms in solidarity during the Sunday games out of a total of 1,696 players. You don't like this country, find another one. It's their right to have something to say. Several owners joined the protests on the field. Washington Redskins owner Daniel Snyder locked arms with his players. But Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones has said the gridiron is not the place for protest. That's not the place to do anything other than honor the flag and everybody that's given up a little for it. Three teams stayed off the sidelines during the national anthem, but one player prominently defied that. Pittsburgh Steelers offensive tackle Alejandro Villanueva, a war hero, stood at the players' tunnel with his hand over his heart. Villanueva is a West Point grad, an Army Ranger who served three tours in Afghanistan and was awarded the Bronze Star for saving the lives of his buddies in combat. His jersey has now become the biggest NFL player item sold online. But his patriotic gesture was indirectly criticized by his head coach, Mike Tomlin. I was looking for 100% participation. We're going to be respectful of our football team. Villanueva, I love you, brother. God bless you, and thank you for standing. As far as the Steelers go, no more. To show their support for Villanueva, some fans burned their Steelers stuff. Jim Haney, 55 years old, told us he's been a Steelers fan since he was born. But he was so offended by the Steelers hiding in the locker room that he kissed his team goodbye. It's hung on my wall for years, not anymore. In the fire. And I hope all your ignorance burns too. Well, tonight on Monday Night Football, it'll be the Dallas Cowboys versus the Arizona Cardinals. And despite Jerry Jones's admonition, it appears the protests will continue and through the rest of the season. We're outside NFL headquarters on Park Avenue. I'm Eric Sean. Lou, back to you. Eric, thank you very much. If there is an image from the protests during yesterday's games that should resonate with most Americans, 
It is that picture of Villanueva standing in support of the nation he fought to defend while his coach and his teammates hid like cowards in the locker room and then tried to rationalize their behavior. The fact that his jersey is the number one seller this week tells you just about everything you need to know about how most football fans in this country, most Americans, feel about our flag, our national anthem, indeed our nation. Joining us tonight to discuss the legal aspects of all of this, the protests, the response, the possible changes in culture that may ensue, Fox News Senior Judicial Analyst, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Judge, good to have you Good here. to be with you, Lou. The legality of this, uh, the, the comments from some fans that, you've, that we've heard, uh, that it's, uh, you know, freedom of speech. Is it really? Well, we start with the uh, basic rule of law that the First Amendment restrains the government. It doesn't restrain your employer. Right. So if I say something here that our employers at Fox News don't like, I can be punished for it. It's not the government punishing me. But there are some states, notably our own New Jersey, New York, California, Illinois, the so-called progressive states, mm -hmm. which prohibit employers from affecting employment status because of a political opinion expressed. Right. So uh, it, it, it's it's so players depends on where them. they were, whether or not they can actually be punished for yeah. going down on on their knee during well, the uh, playing of the national anthem. Setting aside punishment for just a moment. And when I say punishment, I'm talking about from their bosses, not no, from I the understand. government. I understand. Uh, but putting that aside, we're talking about a couple of hundred NFL players standing uh, along the sideline, kneeling, right. Right. disrespecting the national anthem, the flag, the nation, their fellow Americans, tradition, history, and heritage. It's that simple. And in the case of the commissioner, just saying, have at it. Well, the, you know, the commissioner seems to want to pick a fight with the uh, president or or at My least. Gosh, he, did you hear what he said? Yes, I did hear what he said. To hear him say you don't have respect for the NFL as he is disrespecting the president of the United States. I think that some of the players believe that the flag gives them the right to go down on bended knee. And in, the Supreme Court has said you have the right to burn the flag, so you certainly have the right to go down on bended knee during it in terms of what the government can do to you. But in terms of the image you give to the public, mm -hmm. the paying public, and in terms of responsibility to your employer, the Dallas Cowboys tonight to be a very, very interesting issue to watch because their boss, their owner has said, you will stand on the sidelines and, and you we, will not go on bended knee. To that point, I, I need to point out uh, to everyone that uh, Jerry Jones is among those meeting with the team. Uh, and, uh, it just about right now. We have not learned yet what has come from that, nor may we. Uh, you know, it, it may be possible that we're not going to learn anything at all. But he has said uh, that he wouldn't be too pleased. Well, he, I don't believe that Texas, mm -hmm. if the game is in Texas, I don't know where it is, or Arizona, if the game is in Arizona, has the statute that I referred to that New York, New Jersey, sure. Illinois, and California have. And I'm sure he has lawyers who will tell him whether or not that statute exists. Well, what, what, and from the other side, Roger Goodell is it, just, uh, I mean, he's changing uh, the culture of the NFL. He's putting this in our face, uh, those who watch the games. I have to tell you one of the most amazing moments. Uh, my wife and I have decided we're not watching another NFL game. That's we're it. not rooting we're for done. the Giants anymore, even though we're 0-3? Well, we were in Nashville watching the Titans and the Seahawks. And I have to tell you, they didn't even kick off. They remained in their locker rooms because of all sorts of nonsense. At one point, somebody from the uh, Seahawks said they were doing it out of love of country. That is the most perverse statement that I've seen attached to all of this. It is an appalling thing. It, it, it is a culture that's alien to you and me, and I, I disagree profoundly with what they do. But the under the law, our culture. Right, our culture. under the law, they have the right to dissent from that culture. I'll tell you who also has the well, right no, to. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Our culture is about dissent. Yes, that's the whole is. point. Right, right, right. So but the... it isn't about dissent on the sidelines by a bunch of folks here sitting there saying they're going, they're anti-law enforcement. They want the month of May. Uh, to attack other issues and demonstrate no one con contracted for that. They're about, I think, 
Uh, it, well, it's this, very this likely is, they're going to change this. This is this is they're a, not going to like. This is a culture and an attitude that you and I and probably most people watching this tonight and most people in America disagree with. But it's a culture that they're entitled to embrace on their own, however perverse uh, it may be. Really. Of course. I mean, so the, 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 the First the Amendment allows exactly them to think right. what they want and the say what they think. The president is exactly right then. It's going to come to a contest of those uh, exerting and practicing uh, their, their rights under law. Well, the, And by that I mean, as they demonstrate on the sidelines, and I mean, I think, in shameful ways, frankly, I think it's just shameful, uh, the, the fans are going to respond. They're yes. going to do what the president Yes, the, fan, the president's right. The, fan, the fans may very well respond, and that'll put pressure on owners to conform to what the fans want because people pay uh, buy tickets and people pay for advertising on national television, and it may come to that. But I'll tell you who also has the freedom of speech, who's exercised it very, very articulately, the president himself. So when the president says they should be fired, he's not threatening federal action. There is no conceivable federal action. He's talking as a person who has the biggest megaphone in the country, and he's resonated. And you know what? I, I mean, Goodell and these players are playing with fire uh, because... Well, I hope they're not playing with fire. There's no, nothing no, the me, federal government can do this, something to them. The, the free let market read, can. Let me, let, let me finish the thought. And that is this. They're playing with fire because that calculus of the free market yes. that says the fans are not going to put up with the yes, assault. Yes. By the way, nor should they. And particularly this kind of an offensive assault and insult uh, to the nation. The president is exactly right. This is about leadership. Leadership that is rolling over and pandering uh, to those players and the union. Well, you'll probably see a different tune being whistled if this thing continues. We're only in the third week of the, uh, of the season. Uh, and in terms of the union, they have the most pro-labor collective bargaining agreement in any major sport. I, I, and I want to uh, go to this one other point. Some season holders, they're talking about massive, massive class action lawsuits because they signed up for football entertainment, not politics. Don't think the class action lawsuits would resonate, but I, I will never put down the creativity of plaintiff's lawyers to come up with something that might. <laughs> a certain editorial view there from Judge Andrew Napolitano. <laughs> we appreciate it, Judge. Great to see you. Of course. Thanks so much. We're coming right back. A lot more on the NFL and what used to be a game called football. Stay with us. Protests erupting at a Senate hearing on the Republicans' latest efforts to repeal Obamacare. If the hearing is going to devolve into a sideshow or a forum simply for putting partisan points on the board, there's absolutely no reason for us to be here. We'll discuss the chances for health care and tax reform with Congressman Dave Bratt. And the crews continue to search for survivors in central Mexico nearly a week after a 7.1 magnitude quake hit the country. We'll have the latest for you from the region that was devastated by that earthquake and much more. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Rescuers in Mexico searching still for anyone trapped beneath rubble after last Tuesday's 7.1 magnitude earthquake. The, the destruction, the devastation, widespread in central Mexico. Officials say their efforts could last for at least two more weeks until they're Absolutely convinced no one else is missing. The death toll now climbing above 300, 324. Puerto Rico's governor calling on Congress to approve an aid package to that island to help it recover from all of the damage, and it is severe damage from Hurricane Maria. 4,000 members of the Army Reserves have been deployed to Puerto Rico to assist Aircraft and ships loaded with supplies have arrived or on the way. The governor says more federal help is needed to prevent what he calls a humanitarian crisis. That help, by the way, is on the way. The final nails now in the coffin for Obamacare repeal this week in the Senate. Senator Susan Collins today, late today, announcing she is now a no on the Graham-Cassidy legislation. She becomes the fourth Republican to publicly state opposition to the measure. Tax reform, now the next item on the Trump GOP agenda, or at least the 
legislative agenda. President Trump traveling to the Indiana State Fairgrounds this Wednesday. There he will unveil a new tax reform plan crafted by the so-called Big Six. Sources telling Fox News the president's consultation with Steve Mnuchin, his Treasury Secretary and Economic Advisor Gary Cohn, will continue right up to his speech. There's the Big Six. We'll just call them the Six. Can we do that? My next guest isn't willing to support the tax reform plan until he gets a, well, some idea of what might be in it. He's voiced concerns that it may not cut rates enough to produce robust growth in the economy. Joining me now, Congressman Dave Bratt, member of the Freedom Caucus. He also serves on the House Budget Committee. Uh, Congressman, great to have you with us. Let's, uh, let, let's start with this tax reform. Yep. Uh, just as it appears, uh, the efforts to repeal and replace again are dying in the U.S. Senate. Your reaction? Yeah, well, so we just got to get it right this time. We did a face plant on health care because uh, it started off, we're going to get free markets and competition across state lines, et cetera. And that was the promise that was in the Better Way agenda. That's what President Trump promised. But by the end of oh the process. Oh, my gosh. Did you mention the Better Way agenda? Yeah, I did. Oh, I my did. Lord. That, the reason I'm and, reacting at Speaker Ryan's nonsense that he conjured up uh, better than a year ago and, and wanted to make a contest of it with the president. We agree that both are right now. Uh, where are they? It's yeah, well, that it, the better way we didn't even get close to the better way by the mm -hmm. time it went through the Senate and then ended up in a skinny bill. So uh, on tax right now, the big six is saying all the right things. And it, that's a good thing. So I'm going to say that. Right. The corporate rate, 15. Uh, Trump wants the House 20. And then the S corps, that's the big deal. The small business pass through entities. Uh, we want to be within five percentage points. Right. So if you get a 20 percent corporate rate, then uh, all the small businesses back home get a 20. I, I got I to gotta stop you. Yeah. I got to stop you. There hasn't been a committee hearing on that legislation. There hasn't been a single instance of leadership. I mean, we're looking at polls that say they don't like, I mean, that folks just don't like it. Uh, the yeah. Republican version, nobody even knows what it is for crying yep. out loud. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm taking flack on that every which way, right? I'm taking flack. Why don't you write the bill? Why don't you do this, that, and the other thing? I wish I could. And so... Well, what happened to so-called yeah. regular order? I mean, well, I've seen a lot out. of talk about, you know, I, yep. I heard a lot of talk about regular order. And by regular order, let me define regular order in my view. Yeah. What it means are committee hearings and people actually knowing what the heck they're voting on. Right. Who we sent to Washington to put together public policy, not, you know, you're going to reach for pigs in a poke. Yep. And so that that's missing on tax primarily because once they unveil this thing on Wednesday morning, K Street is going to go into an all out lather, as you can expect. So then why don't you that, run those people out of town? Just <laughs> well, out of I, I, just we're going to try. You know, I want a serious. I want to. Yeah. You know, K Street forms your knowledge base in Congress yep. and the Senate. Yep. Why don't you get them out of town, spend all of the money you can appropriate it so you've got research assistance, so you've got people who are expert in health care, in tax reform, yep. and you actually know what you're doing. I mean, you're a former professor of economics. Oh, yeah. we I can. Mean, write, you well, can be yeah. giving sessions every morning before you get, get to right. no, work it, legislating. It, it, you got it right. And so this, is, this will be the test. If the speaker and the president and Mitch don't stand up to K Street, then it's all over, right? If we lose on health care and then we lose on taxes, and you'll see the loss, right? If those rates go up from 20% to 22 to 25 to 27, then you'll know we're losing. If we hold our ground at 20% corporate, 25% pass through, good rates, low rates for the individual back home, the forgotten you know, man, I, but right? Congressman, that's I'm, it. I mean, you know, all of us, uh, you know, we, the great unwashed, the citizenry, yeah. we don't have a clue what's going on. We don't have an idea. And, I, and, we're, yep. and by the way, folks in my business are paid to know what's going on. And we know there's nothing going on. Right. We've got you got a House speaker who hasn't got any persuasive power. He has not been campaigning. The president of the United States has said clearly what he wants. And all he's getting, uh, you know, all he gets in response are crickets from the Senate majority leader uh, and, and the speaker. I mean, this is not a game. This yep. is for crying out loud about the yep. future well, I, health I, of this I, co economy and country. Yeah, I agree with you. And and, and so let's not forget uh, health care is not done yet. And so when it comes to leadership, 
Well, you got uh, four Paul senators. Ryan, you got yeah, four senators yeah. gone. I mean, I've heard this. Yeah, no, I know, but this is with all due the, respect. Yeah, yeah the president's got to wait. Yeah, I know. Well, don't get the president needs to weigh in on that package, and then Paul the Ryan needs to weigh is in. Weighed in. I, I'm so yeah. tired of hearing that. Why don't you yep. go over to Mitch McConnell's <laughs> well, here, office, let me, knock let me on finish the door, out. and see if anybody's home ever? Let, let me finish out a thought here, Lou, because I'm with you on all Make this. It succinct, if you and would, so, sir. if you're going to take out the swamp, you got to take out the money. And so, all these senators, they haven't been removed from a committee yet. They haven't been removed from NRCC. And all you the know funds they're that not going to be because well, McConnell's but you, doing you exactly get, yeah. what Tom Donahue you told that. him to do. Yeah. Yep, you announce that every day about why the American people don't know what's going on. And that's why, because the big money doesn't want you to know. It doesn't want you to know what's in the health care So what are you guys going to do about it? You're not just victims there. You've got... Yep. Well, I think you know what we did. Is there any revolution uh, in the heart or soul of any of you? Yeah, I think you know we took it on the chops pretty good. The Freedom Caucus stopped the first health care bill that didn't do anything to lower prices. And the right, Speaker Congress, Ryan I, made some we're, changes, we're and we... <laughs> Right. I, I, Just don't line, count. Don't count us out yet. Okay. Bottom line, don't count you out yet. I'm going to be honest. I got one foot on the on the line across, counting you out, Congressman. Yep. Thanks so much. No, anytime, uh, Lou. I will uh, try to restore my faith in you all. It, thanks so it's much. It's coming. Good. You, you bet. Be sure to vote in our poll tonight. The question is: Is it time for the NFL to replace its gutless commissioner with someone who will stand up for our values? Cast your vote on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Follow me on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram at Lou Dobbs tonight. On Wall Street, stocks close lower today. The Dow down 54 points, or a quarter of 1%, despite uh, some hysteria in the business press that the decline of 58 points was over North Korea. Can you believe that? The S&P down 6, the Nasdaq down 56. Volume on the big board, 3.2 billion shares, shares of Facebook. Their worst day in almost a year, providing Congress with 3,000 foreign ads bought by Russia to influence the election. A few thoughts now about the NFL and its protest controversy. When President Trump criticized the NFL this weekend for permitting some players to protest during the national anthem, the president called that conduct disrespectful and called on NFL owners and leaders to stop it. Commissioner Roger Goodell responded. He responded by attacking the president. Goodell called the president's criticism divisive, and then he arrogantly claimed the president's words suggest what he called a, quote, unfortunate lack of respect for the NFL, our great game, and all of our players. No, only the players who have been so offensive as to sit to kneel and ignore the national anthem and our flag. Goodell has continued to pander to the players rather than lead them for far too long. Goodell even suggests it's somehow out of bounds for the leader of our nation to ask our country's most successful athletes and visible role models to honor our anthem, our flag, our country. The president is right to say the NFL's leadership is an embarrassment and a disgrace. It began when Goodell let Colin Kaepernick insult our flag and the values of our country and demonstrate against law enforcement in this country. That's what started all of this. Now the Players Union wants the whole month of November to protest more of America. Goodell and the privileged player protester elitists are trying to destroy what was once a great game. And it's time to hold them all accountable in the marketplace, which... Which would you rather have your child or grandchild emulate? The player on the left or the, or the right? Odell Beckham pretending to urinate in the end zone like a dog or Alejandro Villanueva who stood tall when all of his teammates were weak-kneed and cowardly and coward in the locker room. There's no other word for what they have become. They've been following the lead of their commissioner, and perhaps their union, but it's certainly high time they followed the lead of their president. Some have argued this is just sports. They've accused President Trump of making this too big an issue, creating a distraction from the real issues. At a time when we're challenged by devastating disasters and murderous rogue regimes,
But President Trump is bringing into the national conversation the reality that has been ignored by previous presidents, that the left's attack on our country takes many forms, and respect for our values, our heritage, and certainly our nation must be asserted. Values like we saw on Sunday. Alejandro Villanueva standing tall, fearless, proud. And then you see this. Eight-year-old players in Belleville, Illinois forced by their coaches to kneel during the national anthem, emulating the NFL players, third graders, peewee football players forced to kneel, being indoctrinated against the national values that we all treasure, nearly all of us, that have made us free and successful as a nation. Who is the better role model? Villanueva or the players who sit in disrespect of all that we hold dear? This is how serious it is. That's why our president has chosen to challenge the failure of leadership on the part of the NFL. Because after all, this is now no game. Now the quotation of the evening. This one from President Donald Trump who said, when you open your heart to patriotism, there is no room for prejudice. The Bible tells us how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. We're coming right back with much, much more. Stay with us. President Trump praising Senator Luther Strange in a closely watched Senate race. He loves Alabama. I'll tell you what. He loves the state and he loves the country. He will absolutely win against the Democrat. We'll take up the president's influence on the important Alabama GOP Senate primary runoff tomorrow with Ed Rollins and our special guest, the man challenging Senator Strange and the president, Judge Roy Moore. And why hike the mountains when you can soar through the sky, dodging boulders and trees? We'll show you the amazing stunt and the beautiful scenery from France here next. Stay with us. You don't want to miss it. North Korea escalating its war of words with President Trump saying the, quote, uh, rabid dotard Trump cannot evade a merciless divine punishment. Uh, the North Koreans are nothing if not eloquent. The rhetoric, not surprising, considering they've also threatened to beat the United States into jelly. Uh, these are just some of the uh, things that uh, they have uh, hurled at uh, the United States. Uh, reduce the U.S. mainland to ashes and darkness, make the U.S. suffer the greatest pain ever experienced. Yeah, political pundits like to criticize the president for calling Kim Jong-un rocket man. And the North Koreans, by the way, they have said that the rhetoric, the president's rhetoric, makes them assume that, uh, that the United States has declared war. The White House assured the North Koreans that we have not. Joining me now to discuss the president's battle for health care tax reform to deal with rogue regimes around the world that threaten the U.S. security and tomorrow's Alabama primary runoff election, much more. Ed Rollins, Hall of Fame political consultant, served in three presidential administrations, chief political advisor to the House Republican leadership. Great to have you here. Thank you. Uh, let, let's start with, if we may, uh, the nonsense uh, that is surrounding uh, the North Korean statement. I, I mean, we had news organizations reporting that like, that made some sense, as if it were not uh, some propaganda, uh, the propaganda that it is. Well, the day we, I mean, this is nuts to me. The day we declare war, they'll know very quickly, that, uh, <laughs> and they, they won't have to be told. Uh, and, and hopefully we don't have to do that, but we will. And I think this president basically has laid down the, the, the battle lines, and, uh, uh, and, and they're not going to blackmail us again as they have in the past. They come to agreements and they, we give them the resources and then they go back and do whatever they want to do. So let's, let's turn quickly to health care tax reform. Uh, health care appears, uh, is it dead? Dead, it's absolutely dead. There's another couple that aren't going to vote for it. Uh, uh, they shouldn't waste any time on it. They shouldn't waste, I said this a couple weeks ago, they shouldn't waste any time on it. Let's just move on, see if you can do it next year. But right now you've got to get to tax reform. Tax reform. And you've got to get going quick. You think there's a chance for the world? McConnell is not move. Well, I think the critical thing here is the president has to sell this. The president has to go to the country and sell it. Uh, and I agree with you what you said earlier. The president worked hard on health care, but this has to be the sole mission of the next, uh, other than the other duties that he has, uh, to make, make yeah. this go. Because they, they, they can't sell it. He has to sell it. 
Uh, let's turn to the politics of uh, the president and the NFL. I, uh, the president taking on the issue of just horrible leadership in the NFL. There's no bigger fan in the world than I am. I watch five, six NFL games a week. Uh, my, my telephone rings NFL. Uh, doing this. I'm not watching the game tonight. I sent a letter today out to my PAC list. I, have the, I chair the Great America PAC, as you know, which is the largest Trump PAC. Uh, asking people to boycott the game tonight and boycott the NFL and support the president. Uh, I think you're going to find more and more of that. Uh, I'm appalled uh, by, by the fact that the American flag, which is so sacred to us, it's a symbol of this greatness of this country, that anybody would boycott it or basically uh, uh, kneel down as opposed to standing up, as we were all trained to do, put our heart, hands on our heart and thank God for living in this great, extraordinary country. Absolutely. Well said. Ed, thanks for being here. My pleasure. Thank you. Ed Rollins. Be sure to vote on our poll tonight. Is it time for the NFL to replace its gutless commissioner with somebody, someone, who will stand up for American values? Cast your vote on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Please roll the video now. We'll show you a wingsuiter taking on one of the most dangerous and intricate flights over the French Alps as he ducks and weaves through uh, brush and skims rock faces and cliffs. Uh, those jagged rocks at those speeds. It would not be a happy thing if he were to miscalculate in any way. But beautiful scenery, don't you think? Uh, not probably the safest way to see it, but thanks for sharing. And an outspoken former judge hoping to ride a populist wave to victory in a primary battle that has split the Republican Party. Judge Roy Moore joins us here next from the campaign trail in what are the final hours of the Alabama Senate race, the primary election tomorrow. Stay with us for that. Much more straight ahead. We'll be right back. <music> Senator Luther Strange and Judge Roy Moore are campaigning in what are now the final hours of a primary race. Big implications for the Republican Party. Strange will hold a rally tonight in Birmingham. Vice President Mike Pence, the, uh, uh, the star attraction, while Judge Moore is in Fairhope with Steve Bannon and Duck Dynasty star Phil Robertson. I call that a double uh, uh, headliner. Uh, the real clear politics, by the way, average shows Judge Moore now polling 10 points ahead of Strange. For more on the race and what we can expect, and certainly what he expects, Judge Roy Moore joins us tonight from Mobile, Alabama. Judge, good to have you with us on the show. Uh, let's turn to first nice. the real clear politics. Nice to be with you. It's great to have you, Judge. Uh, let's turn to the real clear politics. A lot of people surprised that uh, you'd be 10 points ahead. That is the average of all the other polls. Uh, at, at this stage in the race with the president endorsing your opponent. Well, you know, all I can say is I've got a strong support base. We anticipated this. The president's uh, support for my opponent did not bring the, any change in the polls, hardly. And we expect to win tomorrow. And in winning, uh, the, the, what is, do you think is the reason you will win? What is your chief attraction I, to the folks of Alabama? I think the people of Alabama know me. They know what I stand for. They know what I've done in the past. They trust me. And I think the opposite is true for my opponent. I think this is a very important race. It has national implications because of the Senate Leadership Fund and Mitch McConnell. They've tried to come into this state and buy this, the people of Alabama, and the people of Alabama are not for sale. They know what's going on, and we've made it very clear to them. So they're going to reject the Senate Leadership Fund, and $30 million, according to MSNBC, was put in this race by that fund, and they're losing. That's an extraordinary amount of money, and uh, and as you say, it makes very clear how important it is to the National uh, Republican Party and Democratic Party. The Democrats are looking for their first win. Raises the question, are you the strongest candidate to go up against a Democrat uh, in December? I am, and they'll find that out. I know that there's been rumors put out to the president and stories put out to the president that I wouldn't be as strong as strange, and that's simply to get the president down here, and we're going to show them. And uh, the issues uh, that you're talking about uh, in Alabama and nationally, uh, 
are you truly a populist? Uh, are you the, are you the man of the people? In your judgment, is this part of the uh, the strategy, uh, or is this who you are? There's no strategy about it, Mr. Dobbs. This is what occurs uh, everywhere I go in the state. People know me. They come up to me. They say they're voting for me. Uh, this is truly a populist movement, and I had little to do with it. It's just something of God. Well, uh, of God is uh, also a strong uh, element of your appeal to uh, thousands and thousands of Alabamans, and uh, we appreciate you being with us tonight and wish you well tomorrow. Good luck, Judge. Well, thank you, and we're going to get out the vote. That's the one thing we've got to do. You got it. Judge Roy Moore, good to have you with us. Thank you. Up next, more than 200 NFL players protesting, but Pittsburgh Steelers star Alejandro Villanueva takes a courageous stand. We'll talk about what other players might need to learn from the former U.S. Army Ranger and combat decorated veteran. Pastor Robert Jeffress joins us next. Stay with us. In our online poll, we asked you last night, to, well, rather Friday night, do you believe the level of corruption and abuse of power during the Obama administration now, particularly by the intelligence agencies that were politicized, now overwhelmingly dwarfs the Watergate scandal? 64% of you say, yes, you do. Joining me now, Pastor Robert Jeffress, pastor at the First Baptist Church in Dallas, author of a brand new book, A Place Called Heaven. And uh, and you just, uh, the pastor just gave me a copy, and I am thrilled, and I'm going to go buy a bunch of them just to, to circulate. Well, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. And let's start with these NFL protests yeah. and the president making the decision uh, to uh, challenge the leadership of the NFL over permitting these, these disrespectful acts yeah. during the national anthem. Absolutely. And the president was echoing the feelings of millions of Americans, Lou, who believe you ought to be able to protest things you don't like in our country without disrespecting the country that gives you the ability to protest. Right now, while we're talking, some of the liberal media websites are blowing up over a comment I made earlier this morning on right. Fox. So I'm going to double down on it. I believe these athletes ought to thank God every day. They live in a country where they can take a knee without getting shot in the head like they would if they lived in North Korea. They ought to be filled with gratitude, as all of us should be, for the freedom we have in this country. Yeah, I, I think that it's true of all of us that we take so much of, uh, of what is America for granted to the point that I think that uh, America may be slipping, America as it should be, yes. uh, is slipping from our grasp. And, and I, by the way, that's true of demonstrators, protesters, and folks who are complaining about them. Uh, but we can do better. And, and what I don't understand is the leadership of the NFL uh, permitting this kind of nonsense. If they want to protest, great. No one's arguing that's their right. right to express themselves. But how about doing it on their own time? Get outside the stage, uh, this, uh, you know, the, the stadium, uh, the Cowboys uh, and the Cardinals. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a there's a statue of Pat Tillman there, a man who lost his life serving his country. He made a choice to leave the NFL and, and to put on his country's uniform. Go out, That's salute right. that. Hey. You know, and just salute one another and hold hands or whatever you want to, but do it outside. That's right. And, Lou, you know what bothers me is some of these athletes claim to be strong Christians. I believe they are. But they need to remember the words of Jesus who said, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God what belongs to God. Uh, government deserves not only our taxes, they deserve our respect and obedience unless their laws conflict with Christian law. But it is the biblical Christian thing to do to respect, not trash your governing authority. Yeah, and there is implicit in all of this. I mean, they're saying many of these people, by the dozens of these players, saying they don't like Donald Trump. So they're, they're well, it's worse than that, Lou. They're calling him a bum. I mean, wow. that's just unbelievable to show that kind of disrespect. You know, I was very critical of President Obama, and people bring that up all of the time. But I was critical of his policies. Mm -hmm. I said his policies may be paving the way for the Antichrist, but I never disrespected <laughs> him as an individual. Yeah. And there's difference uh, in criticizing somebody's policies and calling them a bum. Well, what they are doing is reprehensible. Yeah, and it's it's stunning because 
you know, so much is invested in the NFL. I mean, season ticket holders. Uh, you know, the I, the very idea that this is going on is, is because of uh, because this president had the temerity yeah. to suggest that you should support our law enforcement, our men and women in uniform, uh, to respect our traditional values as. Uh, is represented by our flag and our national anthem. And the good news is he's not backing down. And every day he validates why so many of us voted for him. This is a president who's going to stand for right. And thank God we have people like him and Villanueva who is willing to have the courage it's to not, stand up for right and not backing down. Isn't Villanueva, I, he is such a, an example. I, if we could see, again, I'd love to put up the still of Villanueva here as we close out the show tonight, uh, because this is a remarkable thing, because the peer, the peer pressure and all of the NFL leadership making it clear they want that demonstration uh, and insult to the American people. And he said, I only kneel for God. Isn't that great? <laughs> and here it is great. And here he is in the tunnel, at the tunnel yes. uh, in, in yesterday's game, and on the right, uh, men who chose to sit, uh, and that's a shame. 